Our next witness is Joe Saul. No, they haven't taken a public position that was in the past that was, you know, questioned, but I don't think they've taken a public position. Good morning. Good morning. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true? I do. And state your name. My name is Joe Saul. I am an adopted person, an author, a psychotherapist with 30 years of experience working with other adoptees, first families, and adoptive families. And I stand before you today with a unique perspective and understanding, both personally and professionally, of the psychological, sociological, and sometimes physical effects of not knowing one's first family. Antiquated laws such as Domestic Relation Law 114 and others like it, permanently severing all ties between an adoptee and his or her first family, were enacted at a time when the legal and medical community didn't know what we know, were based on inaccurate and incomplete information and social norms that do not exist today. And this lack of knowledge can affect the adopted person's entire life. The laws as they exist do not reflect the knowledge and understanding we have now and therefore need to be changed. In your deliberation, please consider the following. First, I believe there's a misinterpretation of Domestic Relations Law 114 because other sufficient cause is not defined, there is no promise of confidentiality. Second, Eric Erickson, one of the most famous psychotherapists and creator of identity in the life cycle said, to not know one's forebears for two generations prevents one from achieving a sense of actuality, a built-in sense that one is real and, the, and that the events in one's life are real, a true existential necessity. As a mental health professional, I believe that not knowing our forebears, especially those who brought us into this world, is a matter of grave importance and can be horribly painful, painful beyond what anyone can imagine. This lack of knowledge is real, pervasive, and can affect every aspect of one's life until one learns one's truth no matter what the truth is. I think it is a most human of endeavors to wish to find one's roots and a human right to know one's truth, and for many it is a psychological necessity. Thousands of years ago, Cicero said, not to have knowledge of what happened before you were born is to be condemned to live forever as a child. Winston Churchill said, the further backward you can look, the further forward you will see. And Alex Haley said, in all of us there is a hunger, narrow and deep, to know our heritage, to know who we are and where we have come from. And without this enriching knowledge, there is a hollow yearning. No matter what our attainments in life, there is a vacuum, an emptiness, and a most disquieting loneliness. In 1992, Dennis DeLeon, the human, commissioner rights, uh, the human rights commissioner under uh, Mayor Dinkins, said in public in front of the media, it is a human right to know your background, your parentage. You have a right to it. It is a human right and it is justice for you and we are behind you. And finally, I'd like to read the following written by the Honorable Wade Weatherford Jr., a South Carolina Circuit Court judge in opening the birth certificate to an adult adoptee. He said, the law must be consonant with life. It cannot and should not ignore broad historical currents of history. Mankind is possessed of no greater urge than to try to understand the age-old questions of who am I and why am I. Even now, the sands and ashes of the continents are being sifted to find where one made our first steps as man. Religions of mankind often include ancestor worship in one way or another. And for many, the future is blind without sight of the past. And these emotions and anxieties that generate our thirst to know the past are not superficial and whimsical. They are real, and they are good cause under the law of man and God. And finally, one last thing. I've been searching for my original family for 32 years to no avail. 
And three weeks ago, on the morning of January 18th, at the age of 74, I found out that my mother, who lived across the river from me, was searching for me my entire life until she passed away in 1987. My adoptive family wanted me to find her. I wanted to find her, and she wanted to find me. I spent over 30 years searching for my own flesh and blood and was denied this most basic human right. And if adoption is about the best interest of the child, should not the law then be the best interest of that child when he grows up? I implore you to help enact this most human of legislation. Thank you. Thank you. And I, uh, I think your, your last point about the best interest of the child uh, being central to all of this uh, is a very good one because I mean, that that concept as the sort of prime directive uh, is or is supposed to be you know throughout all of our child welfare legislation uh, and I would say maybe accept on this one point so thank you questions thank you very much thank you very much thank you